Okay, so um, these live painting demos that I'm doing here, they're not exactly, the time isn't exactly planned, but it seems to be around this time of day, 4.30ish um, Pacific time, that I'm actually ready to come over here come here and start to do something so I'm um, here I am and I'm going to just do a little another little demo showing you a little bit more about how I approach my paintings and um, I'll show you again this is the this is the little this is the one that had the Bambi so it's wood plywood and that's where I'm at with that Bambi and I'm actually you know kind of liking them right now um, I don't have super strong impulses around what I might do here although I just had the thought that I would um, do some little kind of some little rays coming out from the in the halo I'm just using this china marker and So it's not very much. I might put a few little gold dots, which I often just do with my finger. I think I'm just going to put some little circle, um, little dots around the outside edge of the halo. Again, that wasn't really planned. It was. Um, Which is what I felt like doing. And then I don't have any music in the background because the other day they uh, Instagram stopped my video because it had music that might have been copyrighted. So, so there he's got some. There's little gold dots on there you can kind of see. And yeah. I think that might that might do it. I might add some little. I kind of sometimes I like to add little, just extra little marks. Um, this is more just for creating a little bit more interest because making these little marks actually doesn't do a whole lot uh, to to make to, like to change anything. If I was wanting to sort of really start to do something that had some impact, I wouldn't just make those little tiny marks like that. So and I'm going to also do that with some, I'm just going to do a little bit of, just put a little bit of that. I might go ahead and Add a little white into, or maybe yeah, a little bit of whitish, like a light, light, light blue into his ear. Where the inside of his ear would be. And... Just highlight his little nose a bit, maybe. His eyebrows. I'm pretty much going to call him done. And then I'll see how I feel about him later when it's, um, when it's, you know, like ready. When I'm ready to finish framing it and everything. Okay, so that guy's gonna go. 
the little guy's going to go over there. And then I have this horse that I'd had that raven on. And I erased that raven. Um, well, I didn't erase it. Like, I painted over it. And then I put this swath of red up at the top. So, I kind of like that. But now I'm thinking... I have these kind of feathery things that I made as a monoprint. And I'm thinking that I'll... I might... Add these onto here. I'm thinking. I wonder what you would be like with a little bit of what it would be like with some little wings. So this one isn't, it's kind of like the other, like I don't have a strong idea about it. So I'm not really liking this top here anymore, so I might just, I might just do something a little more drastic and go with red all the way around there. Again, like I'm working on an old painting that's, that's been around for a while. I just had quite a few layers, and it needs something new, and I'm not quite sure what, so I always just like get started and see what happens. a little bit more interesting to me actually and I can you know you can still see those buffalo through there you can see um, polka dotted paper I kind of like that I can't tell how long this video is going so I'm not sure long I want to do this for. But I like that better already. But you know the other day I painted that donkey. I painted a donkey that had a white, that had a chicken on the back and I think I'm going to do that now. I'm going to paint a little chicken. Well it's kind of a big chicken actually. It's turning out to be a pretty big chicken. Actually, I like that. And then, I don't usually paint this small, so but I want to get this little comb in there. I want to get the little comb of the, the chicken. And so I'm just going to dab that in. I'm just dabbing it in like I'm not trying to be super precise, but I'm trying to get it in roughly the area on that chicken where it would go. And then the little beak. So that's kind of all that I'm going to do with that, that one today. Um, after this red dries, I could imagine like doing white stripes or something. I think that would be, that'd be kind of cool up there. So I'm going to set that one aside now too. And I'm going to start on something that doesn't really have anything. This is this painting that's, I just did this, these words on it like years ago. And... It has this, it's very, it's just thin, thin plywood, kind of warped. Like when I get it framed after, if it turns into something I want to keep, it will have to get nailed down to other wood. 
and the paint is super thin because that's all that I used how I used to paint when I very first was beginning painting. But what I want to do is just get started on something here by like getting some layers of stuff on here. So I'm kind of at you know at the beginning of the process. Even though this has even though this has paint on it, for me like this is a brand new this is a brand new canvas basically. And I'm gonna do some collaging on it first. I want to get some paper to use. And I might even glue some of this paper down with paint because paint kind of acts as a glue too. And so I'm going to just start like this. And glue that paper onto there. I use freezer paper so that I can get that smushed down there really good. This is a piece of an old, um, this is a piece of a shopping bag, but I really love this pattern. I'll probably want to try and keep this in the painting, which will be, go against everything about how I paint, which is being able to let go of that last layer because you don't, because in order to keep painting the impulses, I have to be willing to let go and keep going when the impulse is there and not get too attached to anything. And it's really easy to get attached to our paintings. Um, I really love this too, this tissue paper. And so with the tissue paper, you can kind of see, you can kind of see through the paint underneath it. What I'm using to glue this on is matte and gloss medium. And I'm just going to, you know, like flop that down there. Some of that paint is going to get on it. And it's kind of lumpy right there from the paint that's underneath. But that's okay because that just adds texture which I like and I won't use that freezer paper on this one because tissue paper is so thin it tends to just pull back up again so I don't want to do that so here's an old um, gift, gift bag Here's some old wrapping paper, here's some tissue paper, here's some little mono printed feathers. I think I'm just going to glue them on, like sometimes I would save those as a final ador adornment, but I think I'm just going to put them on there right now. And again, like I don't know where this is going and I don't know what I'm going to, I don't know what I'm going to end up with. I don't have a plan which is how I all the time paint. I don't have a plan. I just start painting. I start collaging off and that's often my first layer. And then I have this old fabric. Well, it's not really old, but I mean, I got it from a thrift store and it's super deep, rich color. And I think it'll look kind of cool on here. I'm gonna I'm going to just plaster that onto here too. I use lots of medium, lots of medium to get the, to get the fabric glued um, down well. And there picked up a little bit of paint in the process. That's okay. So I got something besides that under thing that was there before and it's looking pretty awful, right? Like it doesn't look that great. Um, and that's okay, like that's just, that's just how it goes in the beginning of a painting sometimes. And 
In fact, it's, sometimes it's better because if it looks too good right away, then you, 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 I get scared to make a move and I don't want to touch it because I don't want to wreck it. So I'm just starting to add some more green. You know, there's a bit of a reflection from this. I have a skylight in my studio that's causing a bit of a reflection there. Getting some green on. I'm going to go with this a little bit of, see how I'm, I'm just dipping into, I got pink on here, and now I'm dipping into this kind of, this house, kind of house paint that's kind of pink. I'm just going to scramble it around here. I think pink and, pink and green is pretty cool together. So yeah, when I was um, first becoming an artist, like 20 years ago or whatever, and I was taking painting, well, I took a couple of like nighttime drawing classes and thinking the only way I can really be an artist is to draw. And if I can't draw realistically, then there's no chance for me. Not liking this shape here, so I'm not sure. I'm not sure what I want to do, but I don't, I don't already don't like it, so I'm, I think I'm just going to start to change that. Like this, potentially, you know, this piece has a lot of challenges already. Like, how am I going to um, take this anywhere? Because it's just, you know, it's just a big, basically a big mess right now. But this is just the first layer. It's actually the second layer, right? This stuff was underneath it. But it's not very far along. Like, a lot more paint will come on here before I have made something like, you know, like this guy. It, it's, it takes its time, but I really love to play like this. Because the materials aren't so precious, I'm losing now. I'm losing the that tissue paper that I that I like the look of, but that's okay. And I kind of don't like that either. So like I've created a, something of a challenge for myself with this. And I'm not going to be able to like go all the way through with it today because I, I can't keep working when it's wet. But you can't really see much of what was there before, that's for sure. Um, I'm going to flip that around. But first of all, I'm going to use this other tool. And I'm just going to kind of like um, smooth that. You know, the one thing that I that I do like about this thing right now is those um, monoprint kind of leaves that I put there. <laughs> so, not very much. There's not very much that I'm liking about this right now. And that's okay. Mm, so, I'm grabbing some yellow. Because I know that I can recover. The thing is, like, I know that I can always recover. I just have to stay with it and not get defeated by it, which is where all of my, um, all of my other tools come in handy, not necessarily painting tools and techniques. I mean, some of it's that, but some of it is mindfulness and learning when to step away and EFT tapping and all these different things that... I learn when I get, if I get all down on myself and be like, oh my God, what a mess. Like I'll never be a painter or whatever. Then it's okay. Like I know that I can come away from that. So now there's something here that's starting to feel a little bit more interesting to me. And on this top, I'm going to just like do something. What kind of, what, what, what do I want to put there? I feel like I want something kind of dark up here. So I'm going to grab, 
another brush that's untainted so that I can keep that color dark. And I think I'm gonna like grab. I'm not. Sh I never can remember if this is like Prussian blue or Payne's gray. I think it's Payne's gray. And most of the colors, like I mix them on the, I mix them on the panel. That's where I do my color mixing. And I like it like that. I do a lot of color mixing on the panel. Like you can see, I'll show you on this one, this donkey one. This is the one that I did the other day on my Facebook page. And I did live. But like that donkey, all that paint on the donkey is mixed. Right on the donkey. And the green and the yellow in the background and that is mixed. Well, there's some more of that gift wrap that's on this new piece. It's right there. So, but I sometimes I mix it on a big tray, which um, I can show you about too some other time. I'm not sure if I like that. I might. I mean, this could sort of start to be looking like clouds. Maybe there's going to be something coming out of these clouds that's Interesting. So that looks a lot different than what I started with. And it's it's okay right now. Like I don't mind that. Um I feel like I've got something now that I can respond to that feels interesting. And part way along, it, you know, really wasn't liking it. That's just normal, like, at least for me. <laughs> I go through phases of really liking it and then not liking it and just trusting that I can get, you know, I can move past that. I can go beyond and find a place eventually that I can kind of, where I can kind of resolve it into something like this is, like I said, this is just early days on this piece. There's there's more to happen on here. Many more layers, probably. Um, but there's not a ton more that I I can I will do right in this moment because it's going to. It's pretty wet, right? I like scraping in. So here when I just scraped there, some of that tissue paper um, came away. But that's okay. Like I could just throw that back down there right now and then that's just like another layer that later on will be like, hmm, I wonder how that got there. And then it reveals that other under bit there. So, you know, over and over again, the things just build and reveal and then get covered and then reveal again. And there's a little bit of this orange and the black from that old painting. I kind of like that. This is starting to come up a bit. Oh, actually, well, I kind of like that. So there's an inadvertent shape there that happened because I tore off a piece of that. That could go down there. I don't know if I'll leave it there. I don't know if I'll put it there. But it could. And if I don't like it later, I can always, I can always pull it off again. So yeah, I think that I'm not going to do too much more on this right now, but that, um, the red, I'm going to leave this, I'll probably re, re-investigate this maybe on a live tomorrow, um, this is just looking at it in the camera and not really liking that part, but. 
Yeah. So that's how I paint. That's how I make my paintings. I mean, at some point, maybe I'll get an animal on here, or maybe not. Like, it'd be cool to start just kind of making abstract paintings, too. So I'm going to set that one aside. And then this was, was one that I was reworking earlier. And I just put that little chicken on there. This is thick. It's wood. There's a lot of layers of different paintings on here. I'm in the mood, though, to put stripes, because I love stripes. And I'm going to put stripes right on here. And I'm going to use this kind of off-white house paint. And I think, mm, I think I'll go like that. And then I'll let it, if it runs down, that's okay. And then... This is covering up more of that background. There's some buffaloes and things that are showing. So, you know, like being a self-taught artist, I just, I just kept doing things and doing things. And then also noticing the kind of art that I saw that inspired me. And that's, Kind of like that. I like those stripes. What do you think? The stripes are working. I think the stripes are working. I love stripes and dots. They come into my work a lot. It's just, that's part of what I love. Like, And it's so easy to make dots. Like, I love making dots too, right? And if you use, sometimes, you know, like if I use the right color on the dots, it provides that kind of, relief from the sameness of some of it that can happen for me and so I like to go past the edge a little bit with the dots I like to use uneven numbers, but sometimes I use even numbers. Um, so there's that. See how all the layers, and that's on wood. And yeah, I think I'm gonna leave that alone for now. And there might be a little bit of revisiting of things. Um, I like to use these little kind of oil pastels. So I might, I think, yeah, that feels good. I'm gonna go around there. Added another layer. And then sometimes when I sort of don't know what to do, even though, I'm just going to call this one pretty close to being done, but sometimes when I don't know what to do, I'll take my pencil crayons and I'll line them all up and I'll just scribble. So I've got some marks on there that just add a little something. You know, should there be an edge of a stripe along there? There's a part of me that thinks there should, but there's all part of me also that thinks... And maybe it's more interesting without it. So I'm going to leave it because I'll figure that out later after I've lived with it for a while. Or, or you guys, I could just try it because I can always paint over that. What do you think? Is it better with that or without? I can see you. I see Mindy. I can see some of you are artists here who are watching so, I'm going to set that one aside. This one is going to dry. I'm going to revisit that tomorrow. This little deer is the one I've worked on the last couple days. Messing around, messing around, messing around. And I think that's all for today. I feel like I don't want to make these too long. And I feel like this is already a little bit longish. 
So, oh, you know, but what I want to say is, Paint Your Wild Spirit, my course, my online painting course, Paint Your Wild Spirit, will open for enrollment tomorrow. And in there, we're going to do a deep dive into all this stuff, everything that I know about painting, collaging, how to start, how to be in the messy middle, how to finish, all the ways that I bring my wild spirit into my own life and into my art, and how I keep my wild spirit just humming along inside of me, even when I, you know, might get all down and bummed out and everything, about whatever. I mean, I can let myself, I let myself feel my emotions more and more, which I never used to. I used to just stuff them away. But now, like, you know, I bring it into my art, but I also don't let it, like, derail me because this is my precious life. And so I've learned tools that help me to continue to come back to myself, stay grounded, have compassion for myself, understand which voice in my head is, is talking. And the inner, crit the inner critics, I can tell you right now, the inner critics are the loudest. And if you really start to listen, you'll notice that they often have the same, they often say the same thing. They'll say the same kind of shit, like, and you know, so just listen to what's the what's on repeat, right? And then you know if that's the inner critic. And the voice of my soul is that's the quiet one. The quiet one is the one that I want to be listening to and learning how to express. And that's why, you know, like, that's why I'm, I'm painting what I'm painting. Because I'm... I'm choosing every time. I'm not deciding based on what somebody else is thinking about what I'm doing, especially somebody else in my head, <laughs> right? And I've learned so many tools and techniques to help myself through all the phases of creativity. And I really want to share that with other people who are interested in painting, whether you're experienced or whether you're a beginner, if you're curious, that's all you need. If you have a desire, that's all you need. We're allowed to play with paint. You don't have to be a painter. You might become a painter. Just like we're all allowed to dance and we're all allowed to sing. So, yeah, paint your wild spirit. So if you see the link in my bio, you can see... You can put your name in there if you want, and you'll hear all about it tomorrow. I'm doing a Facebook Live at 1 o'clock tomorrow to really share more details. But you've heard a lot about it. So come! Let's get wild! Okay? Okay, okay? Okay, thank you for being here. Super appreciate you being here and watching. Okay.